Seven games on tap tonight, guys, including, of course, Alex Ovechkin's return from COVID protocols. He had to sit out the All-Star game. He's back at it, ready to go for Washington tonight. That's big news. We're going to start with some other high price forwards, though. Oilers are going to host the Golden Knights. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, they are the most expensive skaters on this slate. Are you looking for a way to roster both, AJ? I'm not. I, I don't love Edmonton in this one here. Uh, it's just not a great matchup for them going up against the Golden Knights here. So I'd rather save some significant salary. And you can do that even just moving down to the third most expensive guy at center here in Sebastian Ajo at 7,500 instead. Look, a quick look at his game log. You might raise some concerns. You see one point in his last four games. But he's got eight shots on net in his last three. So he's clearly trying to get out of this funk doing everything he can, and a matchup with Ottawa is always a great way to get out of a funk. Uh, so I think it's a good spot to use him tonight. Having said that, it might be a better play in general to just pay down at center, given the wings that are available uh, in tonight's slate. Paul, you also looking to pivot? I am right with my partner, AJ, is right on top of this. Uh, look, Vegas has their top guns back at center, so that's going to mean trouble for uh, the Edmonton big boys, and they haven't been playing very well of late, while Vegas is uh, looking like the, the cream of the crop in their division. So I'm fading those to Edmonton boys tonight. Uh, there are many high-end centers, as AJ implied, uh, that are uh, worth taking a pivot away from, though. Uh, they got a lot of tough matchups there. I'd go for the cheaper guys here who have been producing and have better matchups, quite frankly. I'm going to save some money and go ahead with Kuznetsov at center. Given that Ovi's back in the lineup, that $5,700 price tag for a guy who's got 10 points and 33 shots on goal facing Columbus tonight, that's very tasty. And JT Miller versus Arizona, similarly uh, inclined to go that route. $5,200 for a guy who's been one of their leading players in Vancouver for much of the season. He's got eight points in his last 10 along with 23 shots on goal. Pete, not going to lie, I like it better when they don't get along. Would you like to make a case for the Edmonton guys? I'll make a case for Edmonton. I just would rather spend down. Uh, it sounds like McDavid might be dealing with a little something on the injury front and continuing to play, so just something to keep an eye on there. I would spend down for Ryan Nugent Hopkins since he came back from injury. He's got seven points in five games. He's about a point per game on the season, a little less than that. Uh, but even though he's on the third line, he's playing with Zach Hyman. It's a pretty dynamic third line. And Edmonton, since they got Evander Kane, looks a little bit more robust. And I think they might be able to go into Vegas um, since their top guys have been there for a few days and maybe win that game. So there's a little against the grain play there because Vegas still has not had uh, Jack Eichel at all. Uh, some of their guys have been underwhelming. They're getting Stevenson back, but Martinez is still out. So I think the door is open for Edmonton to maybe pull an upset here. So I would go, uh, my two centers are Nugent Hopkins and Kuznetsov because I agree with the OV implications of him probably coming back. All right, well, let's uh, talk about wingers. You can mention Ovechkin if you want to. I, I, would, I would like it. I think he's in a good spot. But wild winger Kirill Kaprasov, he's on a 13-game point streak, nine goals, a dozen assists, scorching hot, Minnesota and Winnipeg. Is Kaprasov your favorite play at wing, Paul? Uh, yes, he is. 15 points, 36 shots on goal. Uh, no wonder he's at the price of $8,400, but he's been delivering consistently, and he faces a Jets club that's won only one of their last eight games, while Minnie's got six in a row in win column. I also like David Pasternak and his 16 points. He's the hottest shooter among all wingers tonight. 44 shots on goal, despite the fact that, as the guys uh, mentioned a couple of days ago, he's now playing second-line minutes, but he's still in that potent power play, and that's producing. So they host Pittsburgh tonight, a tough out for sure. Uh, priced at $8,500, uh, I think I might consider him. There are cheaper winger options that are compelling, though. Kevin Fiala and Matt Boldy, in Min both of Minnesota, and both firing uh, bullets of late, uh, are, are priced at $5,900 and $4,300, respectively, and could be part of a good Minnesota stack this evening. Pasternak, 14 goals his last 15 games going into the All-Star break. Who is your favorite play at wing, Pete? I'm going to go off of what Paul was saying with Matt Boldy. I like the idea of tapping into Minnesota. They've been one of the deepest teams in the league. Kaprizov's awesome. Fiala's awesome as well, but you can get Boldy for a lot cheaper than either of those guys. And Boldy brings the exposure to Fiala. Um, Fiala's bounce back in a 12-game point streak of his own 
is due largely to the Wild calling up Matt Boldy, and he's a point-per-game player so far through 10 games. So um, if you look at dark horses for the Calder Trophy, just because we still have like the second half of the season to go, maybe if someone could emerge like Jason Robertson last year, uh, you could look at Boldy maybe to be that guy for the Minnesota Wild. So uh, it's kind of a value play, but he's been hot. So we have to mention him. Paul did, and I'm going to piggyback off that. And uh, AJ, what do you think? Well, I do think Kaprasov is is a solid play tonight. Look, the Jets have been giving up three and a half goals per game in their last ten contests, so stacking against them is a great uh, a great play tonight. I would also consider trying to get Pacioretty and Marchessault in. Pacioretty comes in at 8,200, Marchessault 6,200, um, but Mike Smith is going to get the start for Edmonton tonight, and he's just returning from a thumb injury. There's got to be some rust there um, to shake off and and. As listeners of our podcast know, I've never been a huge Mike Smith fan to begin with. So I think it's a good opportunity to use both the top guys uh, for the uh, Golden Knights tonight. Okay, I can't, I can't mention the Capitals and not mention Ovechkin. So like I said, he's available again tonight. He's you know maybe going to be the high scorer on the slate. But his teammate, John Carlson, just, uh, well two points his last three games. It's, it's not great, but because of that, he's $6,300. He's cheaper than he typically is. So do you like him tonight uh, amongst the defensive options here, Pete? Um, I like Dmitry Orlov more from the Capitals from a price standpoint, $3,100 in DraftKings. He's been really productive. Whenever he's been in the lineup, he's had an injury. He's had COVID protocol uh, this season. So he's been in and out, but when he's in, uh, he's got a high ceiling. He has seven multi-point games this season, which is tied for 10th among NHL defensemen. He's got eight points and strong coverage of shots and blocks. Um, over his past 12 games, he's got 18 shots and he's got 21 blocks and those eight points, including three goals. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of scoring pop from Washington. It's a team that I'm looking to stack. Uh, I got Kuznetsov. I got... Um, Dmitry Orlov, and I'm even giving a look to Ilya Samsonov if he gets the start uh, with Vitek Vanacek injured. But I think tonight is a, a time to to jump on Washington. Uh, I've been reluctant to do so in my mock lineups this season because they've had so many guys missing. But if you can count on Ovi back and Sammy and the Nets, I think they're going to have a nice game tonight. AJ, who are you poised to go to? I do like the John Carlson play. Uh, there's certainly the matchup there is fantastic. The Jackets just been leaking goals since the start of the year, 4.36 per game in their last 14 contests. And it's a good way to get a share of that Washington number one power play. But when you talk about power plays in 2022, two of the best are going up against each other in Pittsburgh and Boston. Uh, Penguins 33.3% in in 2022 here. Boston just behind them at 30.2. So I think between the two guys at quarterback, their number one units, save the money and go with Charlie McAvoy. Latang obviously has been producing at huge numbers, but he's so expensive at 7,000. Go down to McAvoy, 5,800. Again, since the start of the year, 15 games for McAvoy. He's got 13 points over that stretch, seven of which have been scored with the man advantage. Pablo, you're always, uh, you know, you humor my suggestions at least. Could I interest you and Josh Morrissey tonight? No, I don't like the way (laughs) Winnipeg's playing of late, so I'm going to stick with Carlson uh, as as the hot play among the top defensemen. You mentioned three points in the last few games. He had been pretty much scoreless for a bunch before that, so I think he's on getting ready to go on a heater, and what better club to continue that against than than the lower league uh, jackets. I also like Tony D'Angelo, both he and... His opponents tonight are on the second of back-to-back, so you can throw that issue out the window. For his part, he's got 11 points and 22 shots on goal, plus 13 blocks in his last 10. That's why he costs $6,500. And you can bet the Hurricanes are going to be smarting after losing a real good hockey game last night against the Maple Leafs. Let's talk favorite value tonight. Paul, I'm going to go right back to you because, again, you humor me. Tyler Mott, what do you think? Nope. Ah! <laughs> He's hoping to get one. All right, who is it? You got, you got one more pitch. Uh, I look at a couple of value defensemen. I know Pete covered Dmitry Orlov. I'll just add that I like the fact that he mentioned the blocks because that's part of the scoring in DK that, that uh, causes me to turn in his direction. For only $3,100, you're getting a guy who's right there on the verge of double digits every night in DK play. So that's a great value. And right along with him is Damon Severson. 
He's been knocked for his off, uh, defensive play of late a little bit, but he's still scoring a lot of points. And when it comes to Montreal on your schedule, that looks like a points night for all teams in the NHL. So he's a value play for me at $4,400 with eight points and 24 shots on goal, along with 10 blocks of his own in his last 10 games. AJ, where are you going? Well, I'll start with two guys on the Caps that are that are switching roles a little bit. They're shuffling a few things around at, at morning skate today. And it starts with Connor Sherry moving up to the first line with Ovechkin. He comes in at 3,100. Uh, you know, two points in his last two games. And just great matchup again for Washington. And so to get him on that group, I think, is a solid play. The other one for them, kind of interesting change they're making. They're going to put Lars Eller on the number one power play unit. He comes in at 2,800. And look, playing with those guys on the top power play, like, dude should fall into a point here at, at some point. Similarly, I also like Evan Rodriguez for Pittsburgh tonight at 4,200. It'll be him stepping in for Malkin on Penguins uh, on the Penguins' number one unit while uh, Gino's out on the COVID protocols. Pete, who stands out to you for value? I'm looking at Connor Brown for the Ottawa Senators. I liked what I saw last night. Um, he's getting top six usage. He's getting power play one usage. He had a multi-point game in his return uh, from injury, and he's up to 21 points in 27 games on the season. If you've forgotten, uh, wouldn't blame you for forgetting because Ottawa wasn't a great team last year, but he led the Senators in goals last year in the shortened season with 21. And I just like the opportunity for him. I know it's second of a back-to-back -back for him and also the Carolina Hurricanes, his opponent. So I'm just looking at him to be a part of a higher scoring game here and keep the momentum going just because Drake Batherson uh, is out of the lineup. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for Connor Brown to return fantasy value here over the next couple of weeks.